President, please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. Ngay ni, ang yunum yabriah tala da bong, nay ang... Today, the trial chamber of the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia, which has been established by the law on the establishment of the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia, the law which was promulgated by Royal Crown, and as... RKM 1004-006 of 27 October 2004 for the prosecution of crimes committed during the period of the Democratic Cambodia from 17 April 1975 to 6 January 1979 declared open the substantive hearing on case file 002 dated 19 September 2007 ECCC TC relating to three following accused. One, Nontier Mayo, born on 7 July 1926, in Watko village, Watko Wat commune, commune de Wat Sankai district, district Batambong, Sankai, Cambodia. Batambong, His pre arrest Cambodia. address was at Saint Prom village, Khan Pailan, Pailan city. During the Democratic Kampuchea, he was the deputy secretary of the, of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, Party of Kampuchea, or CPK. The member of the CPK Standing Committee and the President of People's PCK Assembly. He has three councils, Mr. Sonarun, Michael Pestman, and Mr. Kope. Kope. Two, Ying Sari, Nemet Bert Kim Trang, male, born on 24 October 1925, in Lungwa Commune, Traveling District, Traveling Province, South Vietnam. His pre arrest address was at House No. 47B, Street 21, Group 36, Center 4, Sankat Tonle Massac, Kan Chimkamon Phnom Penh. During the Democratic Cambodia, he was the member of the CPK Standing Committee and the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs. He has through Defense Council, Mr. Anne Odom and Mr. Michael Carnavas. Three, Kyu Sampon, male, born on 27 July 1931, in Rumtje Commune, Rumdul District, Swairing. His pre-arrest address was at Kon Ktung Village, Songkat O Tawau, Khan Pailan, Pailan City. During the Democratic Cambodia, he was the member of the CPK Standing Committee and the President of the State Presidium. He has to counsel Mr. Kong Som On and Mr. Jacques Verges, all of whom are charged with genocide, crimes against humanity, contre l'humanité, grave breaches of Geneva Convention of 12 August 1949. Which have actively and passively been acted Ils through joint criminal enterprise, omissions, planning, commis, instigating, ordering, aiding and abetting, or 
they are responsible in the form of superior responsibility for the crimes committed in Phnom Penh and elsewhere within the territory of Cambodia and during the Vietnamese incursion between 17 April 1975 and 6 January 1979. Those crimes are set out and punishable under Articles 4, 5, 6, 29 new and 39 new of the law on the establishment of the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia. The bench is composed of judges. La cour est composée comme suit. Myself, Moi Neil Nond, the president. Non. Judge Sylvia Cartwright. Judge Sylvia Cartwright. Judge Yen Sakon. Judge Yen Sakon. Judge Jean-Marc Jean Lavigne. Lavigne. Judge Yu Otara. Judge Yu Otara. And reserve judges. Et comme juge judge Tu Moni. Le juge Tu Moni. And Judge Claudia Fence. Et la juge Claudia Fence. In case file 002, there are 3,866 civil parties, all of whom have formed a single consolidated group represented by a national civil party lead co-lawyer, Mr. Pick Ong, and international civil party lead co-lawyer, Ms. Simono Ford. And we have 12 national civil party co-lawyers and 28 international civil party co-lawyers. May I now declare the hearing open? Je déclare maintenant l'audience ouverte. Mr. Deutsch Perry, could you report to the Chamber on Monsieur the attendance Paris, of the parties to the proceedings? Of the Mr. Deutsch Perry, Mr. President, Monsieur le Président, the attendance of the parties to the proceedings are as follows. Voici les parties the présentes. prosecution is present. Le Nunchi's defense team is present. Defense de Nunchi is present. Yangsari's team is present. De Yangsari est present. Kyusampan's defense team is present. Ainsi que celle de Kyusampan. For Kyusampan's defense team, we also have Mr. Kung Sum On. Maître Kong Sam On est présent. Who replace Mr. Sosovan, who resigned from his position. For the accused Nuti, Ian Sari, and Kusum Pond, they are all present. Quant aux accusés, ils sont tous présents. Lawyers and the civil party lawyers are present. We also have three international civil party lawyers. Mr. Banabe Neku, Patrick Baudouin, and Marie Giraud, who have not yet been recognized by the trial chamber. Today, we have 11 civil parties who are present in the courtroom. Thank you, Mr. President. The President. Could you clarify it? There is another international lawyer for the for Kiss and Pond's defense team. Il y a un autre avocat pour la défense Thank de Kiss and Pond's defense team. Thank you, Mr. President, says the counsel. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Mr. Wacken has been Monsieur requested Verken, by Mr. Verken, Kiss and Pond as a defense counsel. Par, uh, However, the oath has not yet been uh, taken. Monsieur Verken n'a pas encore prêté serment. He armes. is here in order just to follow the Et proceedings. Il est donc présent simplement pour suivre les débats. The President, the President. Mr. Kongsumon, can you clarify whether he has been registered with the Bar of Cambodia? 
the process has been organized, Mr. President, oui, but the oath has not yet taken place. Uh, pas prêté Thank you, says the President. Le président merci. Defense Council. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, journalist. My name is Sun Arun. Maître Sun Arun. A defense Council for Nunchia. Président, mesdames, messieurs, je défends Nunchia. Today there is one council who has just been registered with the bar, and the oath was taken on last Friday already. A letter was also sent to Mr. Susan Lam, and I'd like to seek recognition for him. Mr. Andrew Yanuzzi. Thank you. The President, thank you, Council. However, the Chamber has not yet received la Chambre n'a pas encore reçu cette lettre. So this matter will be dealt with in, at a later stage. Et nous reviendrons donc sur la question ultérieurement. Today is the opening statement. So during the break, we will review the letter if we received for the recognition as indicated in the internal rule. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. President. The Greffier already reported the attendance of the parties to the proceedings. Présentes. And also, there are some international civil party lawyers who have not yet been Nous recognized by the trial chamber. Étrangers représentant les parties civiles qui n'ont pas encore été before we start the hearing, the Chamber would like to invite Mr. Big Ong, who is the national co-lawyer, co-lead co-lawyers for the civil parties, to proceed with a request for the recognition of the foreign lawyers. The interpreter could not hear Maître the sound. Par le sans micro. The president, the court officer, could you check the microphone of the lead co-lawyer? Si yeah, there is no sound coming through. Du co-avocat principal fonctionne bien. Le micro de est défectueux. Les interprètes signalent que le micro de l'avocat principal des parties civiles est défectueux. President, Mr. Peyong, you can now resume your seat until the technical issue is resolved.
Look at my computer and the mouse, it doesn't work. Je demander à ce que l'on vérifie aussi mon ordinateur et m'assurer qu'il ne fonctionne pas. Can we all hear now? Le président, est-ce que nous entendons maintenant Let me try, Mr. Peyong, you may now proceed with your request for the recognition of vous deviez nous présenter international avocats lawyers who are present here. Qui sont présents ici aujourd'hui. And who have yet to be recognized by the chamber. Administrative officer, could you please assist with the technical issues for Nunchi's defense team? Et je demande As the mouse does not work, de Mr. Fei Ong, you may proceed. D'aider l'équipe de la défense de Kyo Sampong pour ce problème d'ordinateur. Maître Pic Ong. There is no sound. On n'entend toujours pas Maître Pic Ang. The president. Le président. Since there is a technical issue with the audio system. Il y a un problème technique du côté du système audiovisuel. On the lead lawyers section. Au banc des parties civiles. We will. It turns the request for the recognition and continue with the other sections of the proceedings. Procédons à la présentation des nouveaux avocats des parties civiles plus tard. Ang chumrong chumrea, som chumrea. Tha ko mum nong de sam naka. The chamber would like to inform. Everyone, that this week is the opening statement by the prosecution and a brief response from the accused and their defense teams. The substantive hearing on the evidence shall be conducted from the 5th of December 2011. Pursuant to the scheduling of 18th November 2011, E131, which states that the trial proceeding of case 002 started with the opening statement pursuant to the internal rules. The Chamber would not read the internal, analysis of the facts as all parties and the accused have been informed already. In order to reconfirm the charges against the three accused, and in pursuance to Rule 891 bis of the Internal Rules of the ECCC, the greffier, Mr. Doi Paris, is now ordered to read those charges again. Thank you, Mr. President. Charges against the accused Merci, are Monsieur as follows. Pursuant to the closing order as amended by the pre-trial chamber decisions on appeal against the closing order, Statuant sur les appels interjetés contre cette ordonnance, D-427-3-15 et D-427-1-30 et la décision de la Chambre de première instance 
preliminary objections regarding statute of limitations on domestic crimes document E122 the accused Nunchi and Kyusampong Uh, appearing before the trial chamber de to be tried on the following charges, having in Phnom Penh within the territory of Cambodia, Cambodia and during incursions into Vietnam, incursion au Vietnam between 17 April 1975 et le 6 janvier 1979, and 6 January 1979, through their acts or omissions, omissions committed via a joint criminal en enterprise planned, commune, instigated, planifié, ordered, or edited and abetted or been responsible et, et by virtue of superior responsibility suivant, for the following crimes. En application de la théorie de la responsabilité du supérieur hiérarchique. Crimes against humanity, humanity specifically à savoir murder, meurtre, extermination, extermination enslavement, réduction à l'esclavage, déportation, déportation, imprisonment, emprisonnement, torture, torture, persécution, persécution on political, motifs, racial and religious et grounds ou religieux, and other inhumane acts. Et autres actes inhumains. These crimes are punishable under Article 5, 29 new and 39 new of the ECCC law. Genocide by killing members of the groups of Vietnamese and Cham, punishable under Article 4, 29 new and 39 new of the ECCC law. Grave breaches of the Geneva Convention of 12 August 1949, specifically, à savoir, Willful killing, torture or inhumane treatment, torture or treatments inhumane, willfully causing great suffering or serious injury to body or health, willfully depriving a prisoner of war or civilian, the rights of fair and regular trial. Unlawful deportation or unlawful confinement of a civilian. These crimes are punishable under Articles 6, 29 new and 39 new of the ECCC law. Pursuant to the severance orders of 12 of 22 September 2011, and the trial chamber's decision on the fitness to stand trial of Ying Tiret, dated 17 November 2011, document E138, the trial chamber will, in the first trial in case 002, key evidence relating to the following topics in relation to Nun Chia, Ying Sari, and Kiu Sampon. A. Historical background, including the roles of each accused during the period prior to the establishment of the Democratic Kampuchea. B. The structure of the Democratic Kampuchea with the following subtopics. Administrative structures, communication structure and military structure. C. Role of each accused in the Democratic Kampuchean government, their assigned responsibility, the extent of their authority and the lines of communication throughout the temporal period with which the ECCC is concerned. The Policies of the Democratic Kampuchea on the issues raised in the indictment. Factual allegations e. described les in the indictment dans la de as population movement phases one and two. Les and phase F. 1 et 2. 
crimes against humanity, et including F, murder, les faits qualifiés de crimes contre l'humanité, comprenant le meurtre, l'extermination, except la persécution, on religious grounds, sauf pour motifs religieux, forced transfer les transferts forcés et les disparitions forcées in so far as they pertain to the movement of population phases 1 and 2. Ceci concerne les chefs d'accusation fondés sur les déplacements de population phase 1 et 2. The chamber may at any time decide to amend this topic or include in the first trial additional portions of the closing order in case 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 subject to the right of the defense to be provided with opportunity to prepare and effective defense à condition toutefois de respecter le droit des accusés de préparer efficacement leur défense et le droit de toutes les parties d'en être informés thank you mr president merci monsieur le président thank you mr parry c'est président merci monsieur parry Now the trial chamber would like to hand over to the co-prosecutors to proceed with their brief opening statement. May the co-prosecutors be reminded that the tune to the trial chamber's scheduling order for opening statements, document E131 of 18th October 2011. Pour ton calendrier, document E131 du 18 octobre 2011, les ont la possibilité de faire des déclarations liminaires sur les chefs d'accusation conformément à la règle 89.2 bis du règlement. The president, may the co-prosecutor test the phone? Can you hear, Mr. President? Is the co-prosecutor? Monsieur le président, dit la co-procureur. Once again, the trial chamber would like to give the floor to the co-prosecutors to proceed with a brief opening statement. However, the prosecution is reminded in pursuant to the TC scheduling order for opening statements, document E131 of 18 October 2011, the co-prosecutors would be given the opportunity to make their opening statement concerning the counts against the accused in accordance with the internal rule 89 to bis. bis du règlement intérieur. For the purpose of the brief opening statement, the co-prosecutors co allocated a total of one mm -hmm. and a half days. Un jour et demi pour the co-prosecutors may now proceed. La parole est maintenant au co-procureur. Some change, Mr. B. The President Counsel Le for Nguyen Chia, you may now uh, proceed. The National Co-Prosecutor, you may be seated. Madame la Co-Procureur, vous pouvez prendre votre place. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I won't do it again. Excusez-moi de l'interrompre, um, je uh, ne le referai pas. Just before uh, uh, the prosecution starts uh, uh, the, their opening statement, I would like to mention that we have just filed que nous venons tout juste a, uh, application for de disqualification of Judge Cartwright une demande de récusation de la juge Cartwright selon l'article 557 du Code de procédure pénale et la règle 35. Um, that application includes cette requête uh, a specific request for Judge Cartwright to uh, uh, step down pending the resolution of our application. Que la juge Cartwright se récuse avant um, 
aucune décision sera rendue sur notre that, demande. Um, uh, all the parties and the judges um, uh, read the application Nous and that we revisit the application later this week. Lise la dite motion et que nous puissions en discuter plus tard cette semaine. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors. Maître Carnavas. And good morning to everyone else. Monsieur if I may Président, be heard just very briefly, on Friday, si je puis être we filed and so, Vendredi, well, nous we attempted to file déposé, and we circulated de déposer a courtesy copy of a request for an investigation une pending ex parte communications between de, de Mr. Cayley and Judge Cartwright and others, sur les including Mr. Rosenbaugh and Patricia O'Brien of the UN, uh, notamment, uh, uh, and perhaps others, in our nous, request, we indicated that we wish notre demande, nous nous the trial chamber to summon Mr. Cayley to provide information and to encourage Judge Cartwright to, Kelly, to Kelly also de provide a statement. De des we also suggested that in keeping with proper égard. procedure, that perhaps it would be best if Judge Cartwright were to step aside doute, uh, and allow Judge Fence to juge stay in her place since she is a reserve judge until this matter is resolved. The application was rejected for filing because the Khmer version la wasn't prepared. It will be prepared in the next day or so. However, uh, we, we did circulate it. We are confident that we all are aware of it. And document. we think that nous at least until this matter is resolved, and we do lu. take it to be a very serious nous matter because we have a judge on the bench important. and a prosecutor un in the case having meetings. We don't know what. We are not suggesting nous that anything uh, inappropriate occurred, but the appearance of it is uh, obviously leads to conclusions that um, in this particular trial, we may not enjoy the same rights and privileges as Mr. Cayley may have or the prosecution may have with respect to a particular judge who will be listening and voting on various issues. So with that, I join the Munchie application and we will respectfully request that Judge Cartwright step aside and become the reserve judge while the reserve judge, Judge Fence, take her juge, position. Thank you. 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 On the president, le president, the chamber would like uh, to inform the council for Nguyen Chia and council for Nguyen Chia and, and the chamber that the chamber has been seized of the request asking for information filed by Council est saisi de la concerning the informal de meeting between Judge Sobokat and the International Prosecutor and the Deputy le Head of the le Director of the Administration in November 2011. Dans le the Chamber will address uh, this issue in due course. La Chambre on se sur cette question Friday, en the 18th of November 2011, Vendredi, November Council 2011, for Yingsari also submitted the same request before the Chamber as a advance notice. The Chamber will also 
address this request la chambre after se penchera sur it has cette been requête. informed après or uh, filed uh, pursuant to the rule on filing of document before the chamber dans le respect the chamber would like to inform all parties that la chambre so far the Deputy Director of the Office of Administration already responded to this request. Que le directeur adjoint du bureau this request répondu, at this moment is not different from that filed Ces previously. Ne the purpose pas de of this précédemment. hearing during the, the day and the following days are dedicated to listen de or to hear the opening statements against the accused and the response by the counsel to such statements des made uh, by the prosecutor. Uh, the, the chamber de therefore rejects la chambre any attempt uh, to stop uh, the move of the proceedings as scheduled. Parties are not allowed to raise any other issues Les other than those already indicated uh, for the purpose déjà of uh, these proceedings. The National Co-Prosecutor, you may now proceed. De cette semaine. La parole est donc à la Co-Procureur uh, Nationale. The President interrupts. Uh, Council Angodam, you may Maître now proceed. Oudon, vous avez la parole. Council Ang Odam, Mr. President, Your Honours. Monsieur le Président, Madame, Messieurs les Juges. Having heard your announcement, and since the request for the disqualification of Judge Kartra is not Nous yet uh, addressed, Déclaration et que May la question de la récusation de la juge Cartwright n'est pas encore été tranchée. Nous souhaitons informer la Chambre que M. Yingsri a sa propre déclaration afin que nous puissions demander avant tout que M. Yingsri a sa propre déclaration afin que nous demandions first and foremost qu'il puisse le faire maintenant avant que les procureurs prennent la parole. Could the Chamber therefore allow him to do so through this statement? Indeed, he has asked me to read. 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 The Chamber has already made it clear to the councils concerning the issues to be addressed during the proceedings, and this one is not part of uh, that, uh, as indicated. De ne National Co-Prosecutor, you may now proceed. La parole est donc à la Co-Procureur Nationale. Hello. Co-Prosecutor <coughs> Hello. Thank you, Mr. President. Madame uh, good Chiali. morning, Merci, Your Honours. And Bonjour. The evidence we will put Madame before you will show that starting on the 17th of April 1975, the Communist Party of Cambodia turned Cambodia into a massive slave camp, reducing an entire nation to prisoners living under a system of brutality that defies belief to the present day. The forced evacuations of Cambodia cities, the enslavement of millions of people in forced labor camps, the smashing of hundreds of thousands of lives in notorious security centers and the killing fields, the extermination of minorities, the countless deaths from disease, exhaustion, abuse, and starvation, these crimes ordered and orchestrated by the accused were among the worst horrors inflicted on any nation in modern history. 
Every Cambodian who has a life during this period was affected by the criminal system Tous les Cambodgiens of qui étaient oppression pendant cette période which ont été touchés par ce place. système d'oppression criminelle mis en place par les accusés. Staggering. Le nombre de morts est ahurissant. The demographic experts appointed uh, by the investigating judges have estimated that between 1.7 and 2.2 million people died as a result of CPK rule. Approximately one in four Cambodians did not survive this regime. Environ un Cambodian sur quatre n'a pas survécu au régime. To the present day, large numbers of Cambodians suffer from encore, the effects un grand of the trauma they suffered des at the hands of this regime. Given the sheer magnitude of these events, Compte no trial could ever deal with all the crimes for which the accused could be prosecuted. Pour lesquels le, les accusés pourraient être poursuivis. The events and crime sites Included in the closing order les are therefore les a representative sample of the crimes. Donc, euh, They include des et two mass forced movements in 1975, five forced labor sites, Cinq camps de travaux forcés. persecution of the Buddhists, persecution des crimes. Buddhists committed as part of the regime's forced marriage policy, 11 security centers, genocide of the Cham, genocide of the Vietnamese ethnic group in Cambodia, and crimes against Vietnamese nationals during the war between Democratic Cambodia and Vietnam, and finally a third forced movements and mass executions during the purge of the East Zone. Masse, lors de la purge I will address briefly each of these series of crimes. Je parlerai brièvement de forced de evacuations. Evacuation forcée. The nightmare of the CPK rule began with the systematic forced evacuation of all urban centers. Urbains. When the Khmer Rouge forces renversé, toppled the Khmer Republic regime on the 17th Khmer, of April 1975. The forced evacuation of Phnom Penh described de Phnom Penh in the closing order as movement of the population, phase one, phase one, is one of the crimes which will be the subject Il of this first des crimes trial qui fera l'objet de ce premier procès devant la chambre de première instance. I would like to take your honors back to the early days of April 1975. Que l'on revienne au début d'avril 1975. At this time, the five-year civil war between the Khmer Rouge forces commanded by the accused la fin and the Khmer Republic regime de was nearing its end. Khmer Rouge, the Khmer Rouge had taken control of de most of the country and some 100 les battalions le were in advancing from all directions towards the capital. The town of Nhe Luong, south of Phnom Penh, fell on the 1st of April. Le avril. Not Long after this, all roads in and out of Phnom Penh were après, blocked, toutes les routes and the city's final defenses were falling. Autour de Phnom Penh étaient bloqués et John les défenses finales Swain, de la ville a foreign journalist who had returned Swain, to Phnom Penh qui shortly était à Phnom Penh, prior to the fall of the city, described the, the ville, chaos in the city center as refugees fled the advancing Khmer Rouge forces devant les euh, soldats Khmer Rouge. Attempts to confine refugees to the outskirts les tentatives d'essayer de confiner les réfugiés en périphérie and they were converging et ces on the center donc, from all sides, pushing, se dirigeaient vers le centre showing, de tous côtés, en poussant, jostling, en bousculant. Desperate to escape the fighting. The trim walkways and flower-scented parks 
was merged les trottoirs under avaient les parcs heavy fleuri or heaving mass of homeless families weeping d'une masse lost de children, familles all sans increasingly d'enfants afraid. perdus pleurant ayant de plus en plus peur. To understand fully the criminality of the order to evacuate Phnom Penh, bien comprendre le caractère criminel de l'ordre de faire Phnom Penh, il est essentiel de comprendre la situation humanitaire qui existait dans la ville en avril 1975. La ville approchait d'une pénurie de, d'aliments et de fournitures médicales et les hôpitaux débordaient de civils et de soldats blessés. Local and international agencies warned Les of an impending humanita- humanitarian disaster en garde contre and une offered to cooperate with the Il incoming forces to organize the most effective delivery of aid and help alleviate the suffering of the hotels. Hotel Le Plume housed many journalists and aid workers. Plusieurs it had also et been declared a neutralized zone by the International Committee of the Red Cross and served as one of the many reception centers et for the wounded. This is John Swain's description of a scene he witnessed in the hotel's Swain, volleyball court. A, a dozen doctors and nurses were dealing mm-hmm. with more than 700 cases. De de the chief medic cas. was in despair. The wounded were stacked like logs, two or three to a bed. Blood streaked the floor. Tu sens s'écouler sur le sol. As the fall of the city appeared imminent, a scene, or rather a Alors sense of fear and anticipation gripped its inhabitants. De the brutality of the Khmer Rouge was widely reported. Tombé sur les habitants. They had La empty villages under their control, enslaved local, local populations in carpet since 1972. To this rope, monks closed les down for gardens and killed anyone resisting their rule. Essayant de leur résister. On behalf of the leadership, Kyo Song Pong had rejected Pong numerous offers of peace negotiations de pour made de paix. by Lon Nol, the leader of the Khmer Republic regime. Nevertheless, many Cambodians living in Phnom Penh were still hopeful Toutefois, plusieurs that Cambodians vivant à Phnom Penh the inevitable defeat que la of the Khmer Republic Khmer might bring the beginning of a new, better era for them and for their country. As the Khmer Rouge forces entered Phnom Penh in the early morning of 17th of April, Quand the city's residents emerged Penh, into the streets, matin, waving avril, white flags and welcoming the victors. Sont, uh, dans Despite les rues the fear, people felt a victims. sense of relief that the bloody five-year civil war was at last over. Oh, uh, car uh, la they guerre civile de cinq ans était enfin finie. Ils espéraient que le pire était derrière eux. The Khmer Rouge took control of major roads, intersections, les Khmer Rouge ont pris le and government des buildings des in the capital, et des set up checkpoints, and rapidly crushed the few remaining pockets of resistance around the city. Tout de la ville. Most of the soldiers of the Khmer Republic were la happy de to la lay Khmer down their weapons de and des surrender. Et de se they too were relieved that the long and bloody civil war par la fin was over. De cette guerre civile longue et sanglante. As Roland Noah, another foreign journalist Noah, present during the fall of Phnom Penh, describes un autre journaliste étranger qui était présent lors de la chute de Phnom Penh, a government soldier wrapped his arm around the Khmer Rouge 
telling me that they were from, 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 the, de, they were both Rouge. from the same Et village and were happy même village. that the war was over. Heureux. La était en fait the inhabitants of Phnom Penh offered Penh the newcomers cigarettes. Des when the soldiers and children lifted their guns in the air in a sign enfants, of victory, it seemed as if peace had dans les airs, finally returned victoire, to this war-torn kingdom. However, enfin within only a couple of hours, Royaume. These moments of happiness Toutefois, and relief après quelques heures would be replaced ces moments by de joie, sheer de soulagement terror. Être the par victors were in no mood to celebrate. Les vainqueurs n'avaient pas. They had received a strict order, which was to be implemented immediately and without exception. The city's residents were to be forcibly moved out of the city and to the countryside. They were to be told that the reason for the evacuation was an imminent aerial bombardment of the city by the American Air Force. A witness who lived in Phnom Penh describes how the orders were given. On the 17th of April 1975, at 9 a.m., armed Khmer Rouge soldiers entered the city of Phnom Penh Khmer and, and with loudspeakers warned the people to leave by 3 p.m. on the same day. They announced that soon the Americans will start aerial bombardment on Phnom Penh. They say that Anka will forgive all people except for the seven traitors. The city's inhabitants Pardonnez were ordered tous, to take the most traite. direct route out of the city whenever the Khmer Rouge soldiers encountered them. Those who happened to be in the north of the city were ordered to se sont fait dire head north. Those in the south had to walk south et so and so on. Aller vers le sud, etc. In the ensuing chaos, Thousands of people were Dans separated cas, from their families. De gens été In many de cases, famille. people lost Et contact cas, with their loved ones and never saw them again. Avec leurs Within hours, the streets of Phnom Penh became choked heures, by masses de of people on a forced march against their will into the unknown. De gens qui sur une leur More than two million men, Plus women, de children, Femmes and the elderly and were on the move. No exceptions were made exception. in the execution of Sans this exception. senseless, brutal crime. Dans Those who resisted de were threatened, threatened beaten, or Ceux shot dead on the spot. Ou tués par balle. Even those most vulnerable Même were not spared. Les plus vulnérables pas été Ill patients were forced out of hospital beds. Pregnant women or those who had just given birth enceintes, were forced qui tout into juste the heat with their babies in their arms. Francois Ponceau, a cleric, watched Ponchot, the events of the 17th of April from the bishop's residence, not far from the French embassy. He describes what he saw in his book. Il décrit en ces mots ce qu'il a vu. Cambodia, year zero. Cambodge, année zéro. Thousands of the sick Son and wounded were Les abandoning the city. De malades quittaient la ville. The strongest dragged pitifully along. Les plus valides se traînant lamentablement. Carried by friends. D'autres soutenus par des amis. And some were lying on beds pushed by their families with their plasma and I be bumping along sur leur lit poussé par les membres de leur famille. I shall never forget one cripple who had neither hands Je nor feet n'ayant plus ni main ni pied se traînant the ground like a comme ver de terre qu'on aurait coupé en deux or a weeping father carrying his 10 year old père de famille en larmes portant sa fille d'une dizaine d'années enveloppé d'un drap tied around his neck like a sling or the man se blesser with his dangling at the end of a leg flottait, to which it was attached by relié, nothing but the skin. 
A former North Lone soldier from Kampong Cham describes the sea, the, the scene of the mass exodus out of Phnom Penh as follows. The state of the people then was pitiful. Some were crying, mothers were crying, children were crying. The suffering was absolute. Some died in the hospital. Absolue. They put patients in postcards. Some patients without relatives just lay there and died at the hospital. As the Khmer Rouge systematically emptied the city, they eventually removed more than a thousand Cambodians who had sought refuge inside the French embassy compound. In the process, Khmers, who were married to foreigners but did not have a foreign passport, were forcibly separated from their loved ones. A 21 April 1975 telegram from the French embassy states, the pain is unbearable for all. Some are parting ways after 15 or 20 years of living together. Yesterday, a little boy was born at the embassy. His mother must leave today. The little boy became my son today. We adopted him. After being expelled from the city, the victims were forced to travel long distances on foot during the hottest period of the year. No plans had been made to assist them in what the leadership of the CBK knew would be a law passed and for many deadly journeys. No plans to provide transport, food, water, medical assistance or shelter along the way. In fact, the Khmer Rouge exacerbated the calamity by ordering city residents not to take any belongings or supplies with them. The march is moved at a painfully slow as one witness testified at times, on the road to pray where people would only move 5 to 10 meters per hour. During short rest overnight, the evacuees slept along the road in empty houses, pagodas, or under trees. As the march continued, the evacuees were under the constant surveillance of the Khmer Rouge troops. Soldiers threatened to kill anyone who disobeyed them or attempted to return to Phnom Penh. Many victims were mistreated as the Khmer Rouge soldiers threw away the property they carried with them. Numerous victims were shot dead along the road for trivial acts of disobedience, such as refusing, refusing to abandon a bicycle. Roads were in fact littered with bodies of those who died from disease exhaustions or execution. One witness, a student at the time, describes the sight he witnessed on the way out of Phnom Penh. Along the road, I saw the bodies of people who had died. They were already shriveled up and people had walked on top of them. Some of the bodies had been eaten dead by dogs. That was everywhere. A witness who was a messenger in Southwest Zones Division 120 describes what he saw on the road not far from where we are today. I saw so many corpses along the road, in particular at the Chao Chai roundabout near Pochentong. I witnessed Khmer soldiers driving the vehicles to wreck and crash the people. This was the beginning of of CPK's attack against the very humanity of the entire Cambodian nation. In the words of an evacuee who traveled down Monibung Boulevard out of Phnom Penh, I had the impression the world had come to an end. On 17 April and the days that followed, the Khmer Rouge forcibly evacuated all other urban centers across Cambodia. 
including Kampong Sam, Takao, Pailan, Patambong, Simrib, Kampong Chanang, Pusat, Swairing, and Prevang. The same level of planning, organization, and ruthlessness was seen in every town. A former CPK cadre has described the scene in Kampot following the evacuation. The transfer of people began in the afternoon when we arrived in the city. The city became quiet two hours later. People no longer lived in the city, no opponents. A civil party who witnessed the forced evacuation of Sihanoukville has testified that in that city, just like in Phnom Penh, the population was told that the reason for the evacuation was fear of an impending American bombardment. Like in Phnom Penh, people were told they would be able to return to their homes in two or three days. The suffering and deaths of thousands from starvation, exhaustion, exposure and illness during this first forced transfer did not come as a surprise to the leaders of the CPK. As Kirsten Horn stated in his interview with the co-investigating judges, I clearly realized the population might have fallen along the way. Ben Kiernan, a leading expert who has studied the Khmer Rouge crimes for decades, estimates that more than 10,000 civilians died as a result of the conditions of the force march. Ying Sari acknowledged as early as May 1977 in an interview with, a German, with the German newspaper The Spiegel that thousands died as a result of the evacuations he said, the first months of the liberation were quite tough. Two to three thousand people died during the evacuation of Phnom Penh, and several thousand died at the paddy fields. Searches for enemies of the revolution began immediately. A witness who was forced out of Phnom Penh states, for the families who did not want to continue, the Khmer Rouge would write down their names. The Khmer Rouge interviewed people about their personal information, and if they would find something wrong, they would take people away. For example, in the case of my father, the Khmer Rouge found that he was a lone soldier and they arrested him. In fact, CPK forces systematically sought out and executed officers and soldiers of the Khmer Republic throughout the country. These victims were the first to be targeted at checkpoints along the route out of Phnom Penh. Some were taken away and never seen again, while others were executed on the spot. Even surrendering soldiers were shown no mercy. A member of Nozone's 1st Division describes a scene he witnessed in Phnom Penh. I saw them kill those surrendering soldiers at the Chiroi Changhua Bridge. Of those soldiers, there were four to ten some of whom had lost their arms, some of whom had lost their legs, and they pushed them over, down into the river. As my fellow co-prosecutor will describe, the true senior members of the Khmer Republic regime who stayed in Phnom Penh, Prime Minister Longboret and Prince Sirimata, were executed by CPK forces. The searches for and the killings of Khmer Republic soldiers and officers continued through 
to other countries in, country in the days and weeks that followed. Summaries were carried out under a deception. Announcements were made for members of the former regime's report to the new authorities in order to be assigned tasks under the new administration. All those who reported were killed. A former North Zone soldier who participated in the forced evacuation of Phnom Penh has testified. After seven or eight days, they set up loudspeakers and broadcast to the Lonol soldiers, saying for anyone of whatever rank who had worked anywhere to go back to their duty stations, so they died. Some wanted to leave and tried to hide things, but they were arrested anyway because they were researched and found out through their biographies. During this deception, saying that the soldiers would return to their duty stations, when four to ten tracks full were assembled, they were taken away and killed west of Grenoble. At Tolpo Cherry, a crime site included in the closing order, thousands of Khmer Republic officers and civil servants were arrested, transported by truck, and then systematically executed. Their dead bodies were pushed together with excavators into mass graves, treated like piles of garbage. Evacuees who arrived in Kampong Trolai, the district in Kampong Chang province, were asked about their biographies. And then people such as soldiers, civil servants, or local and capitalists were separated and taken away for execution. On three separate occasions after 17 April 1975, large groups of approximately 500 evacuees were transported by Khmerus militia to the Tbankpu Pagoda in Tbankpu commune, where they were held for not more than two days and then sent out for execution. Numerous mass execu executions of Khmer Republic soldiers and other evacuees occurred in other locations in Kampong Trola Le district. These crimes are also a part of the closing order. Joanna's will he evidence regarding key meetings at which the CPK leadership discussed the evacuation of the urban centers and gave orders which were communicated to the forces involved in the attack on Phnom Penh and other cities. The decision to evacuate the cities was motivated by the aim of breaking up any potential base of resistance to the CPK rule within the urban centers and identifying and destroying CPK's perceived enemies, forced labor. Horrific as they were, the forced evacuations were only the beginning of the terror. The worst was yet to come. Following the marches, which in many cases lasted more than one month, the CPK confined the entire population to rural communes, cooperatives, and forced labor sites in which Cambodians were reduced to the status of slaves. Turning the country into a massive prison, the CPK set out to destroy all aspects of the pre-existing Khmer society, family life, and all forms of social interaction were eliminated. 
all private property was confiscated. Everything people had owned was taken away from them, literally overnight. Private ownership and currency were abolished. Schools, universities, businesses and markets were closed down. Books and magazines were prohibited. Radio, television, theatres and cinemas were shut down. Khmer cultural heritage celebrated and honoured through music, poetry, dance and literature was outlawed. Men's were disrobed and prayer came to a halt as all religion was prohibited. Thousands of families were separated. In one fell swoop, the CPK eradicated the very social fabric of Cambodian life, destroying the society that connects us and make us human. The closing order charges the accused with crimes which were committed at five forced labor sites, the Trump co cooperatives in Dakar province, the Sri Ambal salt fields in Kampot province, the first January dam in Kampong Pom province, the Trapeant Mall dam in Montpellier Mintai province, and the Kampong Chenang Airport construction site in Kampong Chenang province. These sites were enormous. For example, at Kampong Chenang Airport construction site, by 1977-1978, the estimated number of laborers was between 20 and 35,000. The Triumble salt farms covered more than 2,500 hectares and had between 5,000 and 8,000 laborers, nearly all of them women. Over 20,000 people were enslaved at the first January day. The project extended over 66 kilometers, as you can see in this short film by Retipan. These sites were under the direction and control of the accused. As my colleague will illustrate, the accused put in place a strict vertical authority and reporting structure to ensure that the orders were implemented throughout the country. The evidence shows that the accused were specifically aware of and maintained control over the five sites included in the closing order. For example, the two large dam projects were part of a plan devised by the party center to establish irrigation systems at the Tropean Tmol Dam Work plans were developed by zone leaders who reported to the party center. Kim Samporn visited the site often. On one visit, having seen the appalling conditions at the site, he urged the laborers to continue working hard. The first January dam was le also visited by senior CPK leaders, including Pol Pot, Nun Chir, Ying Sari, and Kiu Sampon. Construction of the Kampung Chenang Airport was ordered by the CPK Standing Committee itself. Again, several members of the leadership visited the work site to assess the progress of the work, including Nun Chi, Ying Sari, and Kiu Sampong. Nun Chi held a meeting at the Triumble Salt Fields in 1977 while East Zone workers under the accused control were sent, for, were sent there for the education. The conditions of life within these forced labor sites were representative of the enslavement of civilians throughout the country. 
active uh, all aspects of life were under the complete control of CPK cadres. Any type of disobedience, no matter how trivial, was punished civilly. In the words of one former laborer, Cambodian Cambodia became an open-air prison in which the prisoners were constantly watched. Men, women, children and the elderly performed excruciating manual labor in absolute silence. Guards supervised their every move. The working conditions were appalling. For example, at the Sriambal salt fields, the women were forced to work until the salt water ate away at their legs. Others were tied to a yoke and forced to run back and forth until they collapsed from exhaustion. In most cases, the work was performed with bare hands or rudimentary tools as the CPK closed the country and refused most foreign aid and modernization. As Kiyosan Pond said in his 1977 speech, celebrating the second anniversary of CPK's victory, no, we don't have any non, machines. We machine. do everything relying on nous the strength of our people. Every laborer was Chaque expected to meet strict and feasible quotas. At the point more than this meant moving as much as three cubic meters of salt per day. At Triumbal, women had to carry 50 kilogram bags all day long. As the standing committee continuously increased salt production quotas, exceptions were not made. Even those who fell sick were physically exhausted, pregnant, or severely, severely malnourished were required to meet their assigned quotas. Workers who failed salt were accused of being lazy or traitors and Punished. De trahison et puni en the population was methodically organized into units reflecting a military hierarchy. Hundreds of people lived, ate and slept together under the watchful eye of the CPK guards. Their sleeping quarters général, usually consisted of large communal halls without even the most basic of necessities. Des les plus Et Trapent Modem, anywhere from 300 to 600 people slept in large halls in two rows, abris, fit to fit. Similarly, laborers at the first January Dam slept in long wooden buildings which had no mosquito nets, blankets or mats. Many were forced to sleep on the ground. Food rations were grossly inadequate, especially given the hard working conditions. One survivor states, my belly was swollen, my thighs were skinny, my calves were swollen, one could count my ribs, I was exhausted but it still made me work as usual. Another witness who has testified about the conditions at the first January Dam describes the rations as not even equal to the gruel for pigs these days. And yet, why many were dying from starvation? Foraging for food was absolutely prohibited. As I will explain later, those who dare forage for food did so at the risk of being caught and suffering severe punishment. Hygiene conditions were appalling. Laborers were usually only provided one or two sets of clothes a year, which they were required to dye black. Toilets or bathrooms were non-existent. 
People were forced to levitate in the open where they worked, air, slept, and ate. Et Flies infested the entire work site. A former junior chief at the first January Dam states that the area was black with flies. At the Dropentmore Dam, the hygiene standards became so bad that the laborers could not talk or eat without flies entering their mouths. Conditions for women were particularly awful. As one witness recounts, female laborers who were menstruating were given no water to wash themselves and were swarmed by flies wherever they went as a result. The excessive labor inadequate food and appalling hygiene conditions led to rampant diseases. Those who became sick were criticized for being lazy and faking illness. They were not allowed to rest but were instead forced back to the work sites. Those who did receive medical treatment suffered at the hands of untrained Child medics administering ineffective medicines such as rabbit pellets or injection of coconut juice and penicillin. Laborers were subject to constant supervision and surveillance. SCPK carters sought out and identified supposed enemies and subjected them to abuse, arrest, torture, and execution. Many were arrested simply because they belonged to one of the targeted groups, such as former teachers, educated people, students or policemen. At each site, just like everywhere else in the country, laborers were repeatedly forced to write their biographies, which were reviewed by CPK cadres, searching for people with capitalist backgrounds and anti-revolutionary tendencies. In fact, as the evidence will show, the CPK developed biography forms to ensure that the information was guarded, recorded, and reviewed in a methodical manner. The president interrupts. Since it is an appropriate time to take an adjournment, the trial chamber will break for 20 minutes. We will resume at 10 to 11. Nous reprendrons à 11h moins 10. Some change, Krupcher. Veuillez vous lever. The Krupcher, all rise.